If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. Yeah. 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 Sending out good vibes. 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 Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. All the existing world around you is made of 99.9999999% space. And this space, so basically our reality is space with a little jiggle in it. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grand America Show. We are going to be chatting with the one and only Nassim Harriman a little bit later. Uh, scientist, physicist, I think. Uh, scientist for sure. Physicist, probably. Super smart guy. Uh, fantastic chat. We've been trying to get him in Grimerica for a while now. And uh, actually, funny enough, we had almost given up. And he sent us, his team emailed us and asked if we'd have him on. And we said yes. And of course, uh, we'll give a shout out to old B Lord who uh, helped nudge that one along, our buddy Brian. Thank you, sir, for helping nudge this one home for us. We appreciate it. And uh, before that, we're going to do a little intro. we got everybody's favorite podcaster, Graham. No more self-isolating Dunlop. <clears throat> uh, what do you mean? I wasn't. I'm not. You were isolating for like two weeks. No, well, I had to. I had to. By the Sort of by the law. I might be there soon, too. Not by the law. I mean, not that I was, you know, but... I was just trying to be safe. That was like a month ago, though, Darren, where you're like, wait, wait, your time is flying by for you or something. That was like literally a month ago. Not it might have be. been five weeks ago. Yes, it was. I've, yeah. only, I have, yeah. I've only lived I've in this going house for five to weeks. Work in, yeah. I've been, What's today? May 12th. So I've been here five, six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anyways, before. Place is really coming along. Before I forget, this is a great chat with Nassim. Oh, it's and, fantastic. And, and we did, like, if people are interested in this kind of content, we've had Marshall Lefferts on, Adam Apollo, and Jamie Jan over twice, which th- all those guys work with Nassim. And uh, they're fantastic guys, like great people. They've all got, you know, they're talking about the similar philosophy and science as Nassim, but they're all coming from a different, a different um, sort of bend at all. Adam's like a wizard and Marshall has his new book, Cosmometry. And Jamie's uh, Nassim, one of, he was, I don't know if he still is one of Nassim's, like his official emissaries. So we I'll, link, I'll link to all those in the chat just Remember? so people have them. They're great chats, very similar. But also different. Remember we yeah. met Jamie yeah. downtown yeah, Calgary? Yeah, met him at an event. We did a little in-person podcast with him. I think the that was video the broke. Time. Remember, we were trying to video the whole thing, but the camera, it turns out the camera had shut off after like 10 minutes. Really? Yeah, Brody had his camera there. I it, didn't know that it, it shut off, huh? The video doesn't exist. Does it? Yeah, it did. I, th- I don't know. This is good. I don't know. <laughs> we, we, we just don't care about video. I just, I don't even want to be out there in video. It's too late to reel it back now. We just do it live for the hell of it now. Yep. And the scene was great on video. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Yep. Especially, so, we got to do it live during the lockdown. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Gives sure. people something to do. Yeah. Get some off of CNN for a couple of minutes. <laughs> if only for a half an hour. So, yeah, I want to mention as well, he's got uh, the courses at the Resonance Foundation. Oh, for free. For free. They're fantastic. I started watching the the first few. Um, him and Marshall do a, a great little sort of intro to the course, like an hour, an hour and a half where they talk about everything. Link in the show notes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh, I should do that. I yeah. should do that. Yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd be good at it. Yeah. I'd be hard to fucking find the time, though. That's a good winter thing. I hope it's still free in the winter. Is it, like, downloadable? Uh, or is it web based? It's web based. Yeah, yeah. So I hope it stays free in the winter because the winter is like really a good time for me to do that kind of stuff. So yeah. Summer's busy. I just went and got a couple of new fishing rods. How'd you it, do that? How'd you buy them? Cash? <laughs> yeah. Against all odds, I bought them cash. That's pretty scary. So you went, we we're just talking about before this. Well, I assumed it was going to be because I was late getting here to do the intro because I assumed <laughs> I've been waiting to get these fishing rods because I got my COVID money from the Indians. 
Thank you, people. Michigan Gaming, my tribe, sent me 500 bucks, no, 250 bucks. Wow, cool. Yeah. And it says COVID relief money. Wow. wow. So I was going to buy, so I decided to buy some fishing rods. And then I think I'm going to put the rest towards my 410 shotgun. But because I want to get stuff with it, I don't want to just. I yeah, like, no, no. You have yeah. to do it before, while you can, while you got it. Otherwise, it'll just get. Otherwise, it just gets sucked yeah. into life. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, "Hey, they're sending me that. I'm going to get is, some stuff." With yeah, it. that's good. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, "Okay." So I found these two fishing rods online. Nice ones, cheap. Good, on Kijiji, good rods for cheap on Kijiji and in Chesterman. Right. So it's like the ultimate deal for me. Like, buddy's honestly like I'm in one neighborhood in Chesterman. He's in the next neighborhood. You know where Joey used to live in those townhouses yeah, yeah, where yeah. we ate the mushrooms? He's in yeah. one of those. Yeah. So those are like right there. I could literally hit a golf ball, probably hit his house. Yeah. You could for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm like, this is a, a no brainer. So he's like, I won't be home till six though. So I'm like, that's fine. This five minute, this is a five minute job for me. I'm going to leave my house. I'm going to drive to the bank machine, which is, you know, two yeah, minutes yeah. from my house, yeah. two minutes back to buddies by the rods. It should be a 10 yeah. minute round trip. So I leave, I drive by you driving in, I get to RBC, I go to the drive through it's closed. I'm like, oh, okay, they've closed the drive through machine. No big deal. So I like go to the door and it's locked. And I'm like, <laughs> and for, for some reason, I like, my brain immediately goes to, because I remember the times when you used to have to put your, remember when yeah, you used yeah, to actually yeah. have to put your card in the slot before yeah, the door get, would unlock? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm looking, looking for, for the, the slot. slot. And I'm like, there's no slot. <laughs> so then I start reading the signs on the door. And it's like, no, nah, we're only open 10 to 3. Even the bank machines only open to 10 three. to 3. Wow. Okay. So if you work, fuck off. Yeah. Fuck off, essential personnel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. And I honestly, in that moment, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm done banking with RBC. This is, I'm pissed because I've already got some other stuff going on with TD. Yeah. You know, I could just jump ship completely to TD. Then I go to TD drive through It's closed. <laughs> I go to the door. It's locked. 10 to 3. Same I go house. to Scotiabank. Same thing. I go to the Petro Canada to try and use the bank machine in there, but it's RBC, so they've closed that one as well. Wow. So then I went to the Fast Gas, and they have, like, one of those, like, generic ones. Yeah, yeah, like a third-party yeah. bank machine, kind of. So yeah. it's there. Uh, Three bucks to get it, your money yeah, out. Yep, yeah. And And it's funny because I'm thinking, as I'm going in there, I'm like, I'm going to the fucking bank, and I'm telling them they can pay these fucking three dollar fees for every time I have to go to the bank machine that my bank machine is not available. Because I already pay a monthly so fee. So this explains why when I when I have I have to go do a banking at the Royal Bank too, but I procra- I've been procrastinating. Right? I have a check on me to deposit. I've been procrastinating. But I'm you can't do it at the bank. Oh, you can take a picture of it. No, 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 no. Just wait. So every time I go by it, it's lined up. Well, this is yeah, why no it's kidding. lined up because they've squished the hours to five hours. Yeah. So everybody's got to stand. All these slaves have to stand in line at the bank trying to stay away from each other because of this fake social distancing. It's because they're close. Like, cause whenever I used to go to the bank, it was, there was nobody in line, one or two people in line that never lined the bank machine. And these are like downtown banks. Mm-hmm. What a joke. They've even closed the bank machine. So is this like, is this because of COVID or yeah, is it a no, war it on says cash? Don't, I don't know, but they're saying it's because of COVID. But it's the start of the war on cash. Could I mean, be. Canada's going to be there. I mean, Oh, yeah. Well, the thing about Canada is, right along is that you can legally that. not accept cash in Canada. Oh, you can. Oh, I thought you were saying the opposite. To no, me. no. You can legally in not States, accept it? you have to accept it. Oh, but here God. in Canada, you do not. Most of the people are polite enough to say we prefer debit or credit during these times, but. I was in the pot shop buying some joints <sighs> and it says, fuck it, we don't take cash. And I didn't even have any cash on me. I was using my bank card, but I was just like, is that legal? Can you just tell people you're not taking cash? And he's like, oh yeah, that's legal. That's pretty scary. That so, is scary. So then I got out to the truck. That is scary. And I'm like, I gotta, I don't believe that. So I Google it and it's like, sure enough. It's like, no, the bank of Canada says that you don't have to accept oh, that's scary. cash if you don't want it. That's scary. Well, yeah. you know, so now you want to make a track. I was just talking to somebody today about how awesome Kijiji is. It's a little, it's a little trading website, right? For some reason, BC used to use Craigslist and Alberta, the, the province over uses Kijiji. I don't know why there was a big difference. Well, it used there. to be Craigslist here too. Yeah, Kijiji but, just took over. Yeah, it, but I don't know why they didn't take over BC is what I'm saying. I think they have really, at no, this point. No, no, no. No, nah, there's no, no. way. If, oh. 
There's no way. Because well, Gigi has five what? years ago, it was it was definitely ten. Still, no, 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 no. Like even a couple years, it was still Craigslist. For everyone, or yes, just for yes, like no, Mary, you no. Well, no, it was a ver- it was a weird cultural phenomenon. Or a technological one, I'm I don't gonna know. I'm going to have to hear from this. I will, I'll find audience. out. I will no, no, get, you don't yes. need to. I'm, I will hear. <laughs> we have plenty of listeners in BC. Anyways, because I've had to go pick up some stuff from Maria off Kijiji, right? Or she's like Facebook Marketplace. I mean, that Facebook Marketplace is really what's taking off for all these personal transactions. Oh, I don't have Facebook, so I don't. But but get this. So eventually, like, it's it's a brilliant thing. You can just go, you can have an agreement with somebody that it's, I'm going to pay you, t- you know, 20 bucks for this fishing rod or whatever. You go over there. It's a great transaction. I mean, for the most part, right? You're not really getting ripped off. You're like, here's 20 bucks. Here's a fishing rod. It's always it's been great. pretty I good. I love it. I love the transaction. I love the feeling about it. Just just meeting a stranger and exchanging goods for cash. I've never or had a real bad experience. exchanging goods for goods. But Kijiji. sooner or later, what are, they, what are we going to come to now? They're going to track those transactions, right? Are they? Do they want to? Oh, they want to track every fucking transaction. I mean, now? Kijiji says right on their website that or they said like fucking billions and billions of dollars. What? Like it's over a billion dollars a year, the Kijiji market. Yeah. So and that's, and that's cash, just going no tax, by that's their that feedback stuff, right? on yeah. ads where yeah. people say I my ad worked, my ad wow, worked, my yeah, ad yeah, worked. Yeah. yeah. And every time that comes up for me, I decline. I don't know, no, no other, yeah, yeah, other, of course. other, no, of course, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not the only one doing that. Yeah, so it's There's probably a measurable times, percentage. Five times that or 10 times that. Yeah. I'd say, I, it's no, probably I don't 5% know about, of the people interact with that. I I'd would say, say it's double that. No, it's, it's. Cause they're pretty aggressive with it. You have to select something. No, really? So anyway, I, I'm anyway, just anyway. selecting. Other, it's yeah. like, it'd be just as easy for me to select. I found a buyer as for me to say other. Right. Anyways, eventually this is this is probably where they want to go. Get rid of the cash, get into some sort of every bank's going to have its own crypto or every country's going to have its own crypto and they're going to start tracking all these transactions. Whether it's in PayPal or or uh, email by that, transfers by or that whatever, same, right? By that same fucking gamut. Gambit? Gambit, yeah. yeah. Um I mean, the Canadian government has just basically admitted that they're not going to be able to track the 200,000 fraudulent CERB applications that they've paid out. What applications? CERB. What's that? The Canadian Emergency Relief Benefit. So there's about 200,000 fraudulent things of people that weren't working. That's that they know of. (laughs) That weren't working. And they... That applied for CERB that weren't eligible. Why weren't they eligible? Because they, they were working? already weren't working. Well, I mean, they can't get a job then. People that haven't worked in years. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But and so they're calling said, that fraudulent. Well, yeah. Well, they should have been a fucking clear on their thing then. No, I mean, no, it was pretty clear. No, I don't think so. No, I, trust no, me, bro. No, I, I went looked. on there because I was trying to think. I was like, quick fucking pay cut. Can I get serve? Is there any sort of? Because I thought maybe there's a sliding scale where you can say my wage was affected by this amount. But no, it's two grand, and it's like yes or no. Did you miss this much work? Did, did you make at least this much money last year? Did you da 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 da? Hmm. So now people, it's come out that there's about 200,000 people that shouldn't be on. So, and you know what? I noticed it because like right after those CERB payments started coming out, the homeless people were partying downtown. <gasps> I remember driving oh around God, being yeah. like, oh my God, people are fucking yelling and screaming and hooting and hollering just as soon as the CERB money comes out. Now I'm not judging. I don't give a fuck. No, no, but, no, but that but just there's think. obviously so there's a direct 200, correlation 200,000 people, and this is straight from the numbers. That's a lot of people for Canada, I mean. So 200,000 times 2,000 per month. What's that? Well, was it per month or only one? Oh, is it no, still going on? You yeah. get to you yeah. get to apply for it and they've now they've admitted that they don't have the manpower it would take them years to try and track it all down. Oh my god, it's so it's Hey just, Siri, what's 2,000 times 200,000? 2,000 times 200,000 is 400 million. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> per month. <That's, laughs> isn't that like, how much was the stimulus itself? Double that? I mean, wasn't it was a it couple under, hundred a billion? Co- oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Right. A couple hundred billion. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was thinking billion to drugs get mixed up with my thousand. 400 million a month. That's sad. Yeah. Tax dollars. 
Have you seen those memes about the homeless? Meanwhile, meanwhile, me who pays fucking thirty, forty thousand dollars a year in fucking income tax for the last twenty years of my life. I mean, it hasn't been that amount the whole time, but you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've paid fucking hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes, and I don't get fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. nothing there for me. No, no. Oh, you'll get more tax. You'll get tax. Oh yeah, I can see it coming. Up, yeah. I can move to reserve. Get all that back. It'll ramp up. It'll they'll even everything out sooner or later here. Anyway. Anyways, but have you seen much. those memes about the homeless? Like, well, why aren't the homeless? Why? If this is so deadly, how come it's not ravaging the homeless camps? I don't know. What about the, you know, the people you know what else outside, we're not, you know not what else we're not hearing washing about? Washing their hands every day. What with about masks? all those refugee camps in Europe? Yeah. We haven't heard anything about any yeah. of that. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, I we digress. don't want to get too. I Too got, far than that, because I have some stuff to talk about. Go ahead. What I shot myself an antelope on Friday. An antelope? Yeah. Cool. They call it a speed goat. Really? Yeah. Cool. Antelope. It was cool. Wow. Why? I mean, you don't see a lot of antelopes around, do you? It's either no. elks or deer, right? You know or... what's funny is we went out there. We shot at some geese. Well, we didn't even shoot at some geese. We went up on some geese in the one spot. Didn't get any. Just shot off the 12-gauge a couple of times for fun. Uh, cause Eric hadn't shot it yet. So I let him, he hasn't tried a shot, a semi-auto. I still think we should get you out shooting the guns one day. I don't want a gun. I don't and want to shoot the guns. I can pull a trigger if I need to one day. No, <laughs> I don't think you can, but you won't be able to load it or cock it or anything. Oh, it's, it's, is it the same as what they do on TV? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> shoot your, I played, shoot your fucking I played pistol off. whip in VR. Okay. You're set. <laughs> anyway, so then we went to another spot a little further east, maybe like an hour and 10 minutes from here. And we were driving up the one road to see a couple deer. An hour and 10 minutes east? Yeah. Okay. And they went running up over the hill. So we drove up a little farther, came up over the hill, and got, there's the two deer. There they are. Get the scope on them. And uh, it's pretty windy. I couldn't quite get the shot. When I did shoot, I missed. And they ran away. So then we were, I was feeling a little... Little rundown, like fuck again. I missed the fucking deer, and then we hopped in the truck and just like fuck. So we drove drive up and around the corner, and there's a whole fucking herd of antelopes there. Wow! And they didn't run away with the gunshot. Like you drove far enough away. Yeah, it was far. Away. It was pretty windy. Yeah. Right. So then, uh, so the wind would have taken it, taken the shot, the noise away pretty quick. I don't think they would have heard it. And we had probably it was probably you know five four or five k or up yeah, the road. Yeah. So we seen a herd of them and uh, yeah, got a shot off, hit it, dropped it. That was it. Nice. Threw it in the back of the truck, cut the guts out, get back here, hung it in the garage. And uh, my buddy Nate came over. This is my first time butchering an animal by myself. My buddy Nate came over and uh, helped me. We butchered the whole thing. What was that like? It was great. Was it? Yeah. I've cleaned a ton of fish. Okay. And done like smaller game and stuff like that. And I used to, when I was a kid, I've like always, you know, been helping my uncles and shit when they were cleaning their moose. It was just never like, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah, it was yeah. like, hey, do this. Hey, do yeah, that. Yeah. We're way too young to comprehend yeah. the process. So I didn't really know, but Nate's done it a ton of times. So he came over, helped me. Did all that took about probably three hours. Yeah. And then Not too bad. probably another, well, I spent another hour and a half probably the next day doing the ground. So I had to grind in the pork fat and all that shit. <clears throat> it was wow. good. I ended up with about 45, 50 pounds. Good. Meat in the fridge, 20 pounds of ground. I'll give you a couple pounds of ground after the show you take it home. It's good stuff. <sighs> Might be too gamey for me. Not gamey at all? No? No. I don't think you'll even notice it's the difference. It's a fast goat and it's not gamey? No, I couldn't believe it. Dude, it's so <laughs> tender. I could not believe it. Wow. The good. tenderloins, I was just frying them up in the pan and eating them like that. Really? That's my breakfast. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Good. Delicious. Good for you. Congrats. Thanks, buddy. Did you did you say a prayer? Did you ask him for my forgiveness tobacco. or anything? Or did forgiveness. You like, no, I just you know, had my did, tobacco. You know, did you, you know, that's good. Yeah. yeah, that's it. The tobacco. You don't have like a little ritual to do, being Aborigine and all that. What do you think tobacco is, bro? <laughs> you just you just gave it to gave the spirit tobacco or whatever. Yeah, it's gratitude. Yeah, you laid tobacco right. down. Good. Awesome. So now, I'm, you know, I'm going to go out and get some walleyes this weekend over at the fish pond. 
stock up the fridge with some walleyes, the freezer with some walleyes, and then maybe get one more elk. Be good for the year. Nice. I'll have a year's worth of meat supply. I do got to figure out a way to get more birds in there. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Because, I don't know, that's what the 410 for is for shooting like partridge and stuff like that. It'd be easier if you had a farm because I'd really rather just farm chickens. Yeah. Would be the best yeah. way to, like, I, yeah. I really don't mind chicken. And it's not, a, I feel like it'd be less work to just have an area of your farm to just have a chicken cycle going somehow. Yeah. 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 Than to have to go out and waste all that time. And not that it's just wasted time. It's just, you know, Man, it's a lot of effort to go out to get birds, you know, because yeah, it's not right, like you can right. go out and get 30, you get 40 meal. birds yeah, in yeah. a day, right? Yeah, you go right. out and maybe you get four or five if you're lucky and they're a little smaller than chickens. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> And you probably spent 30 bucks in gas going out there. Whereas you go out and you drop a deer or an elk and yeah, it's you know, worth it. It's, it's totally worth, that worth day, it. Day's it's worth the day's whatever. work. Whereas, you know, the birds yeah. I'm not convinced. Yeah. Except for the geese, you can shoot a lot of geese, but I mean, who the fuck wants to eat a ton of geese? Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. Anyway, that was my weekend. Cool. What do you got? Oh, I got a quote for us. To, uh, we got to wrap this, uh, this intro up here. We had 20 minutes. Quick. Really? Yeah. Wow. This is quite an ap a appropriate quote <coughs> from the Octopus of Global Control from Charlie Robinson. And then I have a little uh, listener email to say something about a uh, jingle for the Operation Project segment. Project Operation. Do we have a new jingle for that? We do. We have two new jingles for that. Um, so this is uh D darren can guess this 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 uh this guy the author of this quote it's all right of... i can't find the okay phone. here we go go back to bed this is kind of appropriate <laughs> you ready yes go back to oh, bed i found and... it oh. <laughs> The iPad wasn't charged. I mean, this is all goes back to the fishing rod debacle. I'm unprepared. Unprepared because of the cash, the war on cash. And for some reason, this. Fuck. Okay. Okay. No. 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 Too no, much the, no. no. <laughs> it's the profound quote of the week. Darren, can you guess it? Go back to bed, America. Your government has figured out how it all transpired. Go back to bed, America. Your government is in control again. Here, here's American gladiators. Watch this. Shut up. Go back to bed, America. Here's American gladiators. Here are 56 channels of it. Watch these pituitary retards being bang their fucking skulls together and congratulate you on living in the land of freedom. Here you go, America. You are free to do what we tell you. You are free to do what we tell you. Dave McGowan. No, I'm close. Who was it? It's more from the comedic side of things. I didn't. Bill didn't Hicks. Come, yeah, Bill Hicks. Yeah, didn't come across very comedic. Sorry, but now you didn't do. You didn't. Uh, I didn't do. I didn't knock it out of the park, eh? So did you email me that last the new jingle? Yeah, but it's okay because I got an email with another one. We're not going to worry about the jingle for this episode. I'm just going to read the email and then we're going to get into it. Get into what? The segment. Oh, this is a real, this one's really sticking. People like are liking it. It's like a week. Project operation, operation project. Well, you know, I don't know. I should skip a week here and there probably. But Hey, Graham, last week, or episode more. 419, when, oh, this is episode 420 coming out. This is episode 420, yeah. Nassim Harriman. Yeah. That's a, that's pretty good. <laughs> We're wondering what to do. And he's probably like one of our best guests ever, really. Yeah. And, you know, that's good. That's good. Pretty harsh on the we other. Were gonna, we were gonna do. We were gonna do. A, we were gonna do like a you know a round table about weed and stuff or a call of course, show or a call in show, but whatever. This is here what we are. Hey Graham, last week four nineteen when Darren couldn't get the sound clip to work before the quote of the eerie sound, the attached clip popped into my head. So we sent a clip because it popped into his head. Are I you record. Quiet? I recorded it in two thousand and nine, and I haven't thought about it. In 11 years. 
Crazy, eh? I made it right around the time I lived in Calgary for a year. Ooh. So the jingle was made often, in Calgary? And would often travel the countryside of southern Alberta to be inspired by the sky. I love that that drive down, like the 22 through southern Alberta. It's fantastic. The rolling hills and all that, and the big sky. Dude, I was up in Chain Lakes on fucking Sunday morning, and it snowed six inches. Yeah. There was so much snow at, well, at the top of the pass that I had to get out and walk in front of the truck so we didn't drive off the edge. Really? Because, you know, everything's just white. Wow, It's, just, it's really? just white. Wow. After searching my files today, I found it. If you like it, feel free to use it on your show. If you don't like it, no sweat. Take up and take care and keep up the good work. Kyle. 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 Are you play it? Yeah, it's, it's loading right now. Loading. It's loading. You need a new computer. Slow. Psychedelic. Be a good trip report, Jingle. All right, let's have it. All right, this is Operation May Day. Because hmm. it's May. Operation May Day involved a series of EW tests. We've talked about these before, right? Entomological warfare. This was the U.S. military back in 1956 in Savannah, Georgia. These tests were designed to real informa- reveal information about the dispersal of yellow fever mosquitoes. In an mosquitoes? Er- mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> in an urban area in a city <laughs> these mosquitoes were released from ground level in savannah then recorded then recovered using traps baited with dry ice the operation was detailed in a partly declassified u.s army report in 1981 crazy eh so I went, to, I went to that report they just assumed they got them all back with their little traps i went to that report and it's uh, it's attack of the killer mosquitoes. I've got a link in the uh, in the show notes, and it's pretty crazy. They're doing this whole analysis of how much it costs to flood a battalion or a city with disease filled m- insects like mosquitoes, and they've got they've got depending on the percentage of death from the thing, they've got a, a cost per death in there. Like how they've done this it? analysis. Well, this is this is they're going back to seventies dollars. Um, I gotta find the, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. They, and they talk about the, the panic, what to do if this actually happens. Um, oh, they talk about one of the, one of the best ones to use would be foot and mouth actually. Foot and mouth disease? Yeah. Creepy, eh? It's just creepy that they put this all together. Now they analyzed the cost of it and it really wasn't very much. It was like 26,000 bucks or something. I'm like, Maybe that's in millions. Like, would that be 26 millions? But it doesn't seem like it. It seems like fairly cheap, cheap operation. Huh. We could run that. So if 5% of the people died, the cost per death would be two point eighty six, two dollars and eighty six. The fuck was that? Oh, oh sorry, it's dude. hooked up to your computer. Yep. And then uh, if 50% of people died, the cost would drop to 0.29. Ooh, not bad. Crazy, eh? I mean, I don't even like talking about this stuff. I found it's uh, pretty weird. a nice 40-acre parcel. Northern Ontario on a river, treed for 30 acres, treed, forested. Wow. Riverfront, 10 acres. Guess how much? How many acres? 10? 40. 40 acres? Treed? 30 treed. 30 treed? 10 or 8 to 10 are clear to build on. I have no idea. $18,000. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's pretty tempting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially with everything now. I mean, they want people in the cities right now. We they don't just, They don't want you out in the wood. They want can, you in could, the cities. I mean, think they want to control you get a, everything you in the city. You get cities. a half decent tiny house for like 15 grand. Yeah. We could buy that and just drop like five tiny houses yeah. on it. Yeah. Just be like fish in the river. Well, they've, the got a, they've got a, a cost here of aerosol attack on a city and it's only $180,000. That's not bad. That's pretty cheap. We could sell both vehicles and maybe. Borrow the rest. The yellow fever is way cheaper on a city. It's like eleven thousand by mosquitoes. Hmm. We're in the wrong business. What about what's the market on on mind viruses through podcasts? Ah, uh, that's unta- intangible. Intangible. Yeah. 
NordVPN really Untangible. wants us to send out their mind virus. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I guess I shouldn't even have said their name. <laughs> <laughs> because it's funny, I it. just listened to something who advertised for them. Oh, yeah, I said no. But. Who was it? It was... Uh, Sticks in, who was it? I don't know who it was now, actually. Huh. Interesting. They had been emailing My, and emailing oh, Jordan and emailing. I just listened to it on the way here. The they first time I've ever listened times, to Jordan Sather. So I finally replied and just said no. Wow. Stop emailing. Wow. Fantastic. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, we don't Money take out the window, sponsors. people. We don't take any sponsors. Money no, uh, out the window because we don't want NordVPN controlling our message. That's right. America. We don't want anybody controlling no, our message. except for you guys. Yeah. Well, you guys aren't really controlling. Yeah, anything. but they would. Un- and, I mean, if people didn't want us to talk about certain things, we probably wouldn't talk about them because we want listeners. But we'd still <laughs> talk. We, so far, it hasn't happened. We talk about what we want to talk about. That's right. Darren yeah. doesn't really like my project operation, but people are telling me keep it going. So are I'm they you're getting going. some yeah. support? <laughs> I'm getting some indirect backdoor support yeah. on the project Fuck operation. Grimes. <laughs> You don't know what he's talking about. Uh, yeah. Well, it's always something. I mean, before that, it was a UFO quote. Yep. I pushed back, and, and I eventually won that battle. It took like four years, you won but I battle. won that battle. Well, I'd been saying for years that it should just be the profound quote of the week. Oh, right, like, Let's right. just drop the UFO thing so yeah, it doesn't yeah. have well, to Well, no, it's because I had a whole I mean, wacky UFO quote. For the last, like, I mean, two I years, to... there was nothing profound about them. Why? Of course there was. Well, they, they were getting to slim pickings. I mean, yeah. I went through all the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. In the first couple of years. Yeah. Anyway, grandamerica.ca slash support. Uh, please support the show. We need uh, you guys to keep supporting the show and support the show more if you're getting some value from it just for that reason so that we can keep saying no to fucks like NordVPN and these other people that want to advertise or it's a slippery slope once you get in bed with those advertisers. The next thing you know, they're saying like, hey. You can't talk about this. You can't talk about that. You got to have B- Peter Hotez on and say vaccines are good, <clears throat> Joe Rogan. But, uh, you know, <laughs> this is what happens when you have advertisers. This is why we don't want advertisers ever. We just want support from you guys. So if you think we're doing a good job and the show is good, send some support our way over at grimerica.ca slash support. Maybe the show's just not good. Yeah, lately. you can review the show too. That's all. No, good. Reviewing Join the, show the chats. Hey, reviews put some are memes, down a bit and memes. supports down a bit. I get it. The COVID maybe yeah. it's affecting some people's pocketbooks, so I'm not going to take the support personally. But I mean, reviews are free, people. You could review the show yeah. for free while you're locked yeah. down in COVID. You got nothing but fucking time. Join the chats. Throw some memes in the memes. You can Smith join the chats. America.ca slash chats. Another fantastic place to be. And a double whammy. If you're a supporter and you're in the chats, you get to be a special color so everyone else knows how cool you are. <laughs> so, America.ca slash support. Please. It's time. Uh, what else you got? That's about it, I think. That's about yeah, it. I think so, yeah. Just enjoy this chat with Nassim. Eh? It's going to be it was a fun hey. one. It was a fun one. Yeah. All right, guys, enjoy the chat with the one and only Nassim Aaron. We've got a long-awaited show here. We've got Nassim Harriman with us. He's the founder of the Resonant Science Foundation. Most of our listeners have heard us talk about your work before. You've written a couple awesome papers, uh, one of them might be in the quantum gravity and the holographic mass. You've also established Taurus Tech, which has made the art crystals. We had a little synchronicity a while back where like three or four guests in a row were wearing your art crystals. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're very we're, – we're not – I'm not going to say we're very familiar with your work. We try – and our listeners have heard a lot about you, but it's great to have you on. Um, so welcome uh, to the show. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. That's great. Fellow Canucks up yeah. there in the north. I'm, yeah, that's right. I, yeah. I like I like we were talking about before the show. I used to live up there in Whistler and you know endure the the warm weather of uh, the minus 40s and and the cold weathers of the minus 60s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just came from winter to summer directly. Like it feels like last week or this week. We That's just switched. Beauty today. We switched gears from winter to summer. So, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So yeah. I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking because we've had we've had a few of your colleagues on before. So listeners are pretty familiar with your work, and I thought maybe we could start kind of jump into the deep end a little bit. Maybe talk about. I wanted to thank you first of all about putting your classes on. Uh, on for free there at the resident science foundation. I kind of signed up, watched your first few lectures, you and uh, Marshall efforts, fantastic stuff. So I wanted to thank you for that. And I'm glad to see there's already thousands and thousands of people signing up. So this must be a great opportunity for you to get your, uh, your theories out there and get people thinking differently. Yes, it's great. I mean, it, it's been a hard, you know, this period has been hard for the foundation because of the whole, you know, quarantine and uh, the foundation was very much uh, part of a of a program. I had a program that was about traveling to very exotic countries and going to ancient sites. And uh, so we had to cut that out completely and which produced some difficulties for the foundation. But at the same time, I felt like, well, people are at home and they need something else than mainstream media <laughs> to look at. And, um, you know, I thought, okay, this is, I got to put it out, you know, for people to be able to study at home during this time. And uh, it's been great. There's 20,000 people taking the course right now. And wow, you know, it's, it's, um, it's dynamic. People are really enjoying it. You know, the people or participating on the forum. It's really nice to see. And, and I'm really excited as well because I'm in the middle, I'm in the midst of publishing a whole new section of the physics. And it's so exciting. Wow, that's I'm great. I'm so amazed as what we found. What, what is that, new, uh, what is that new, new physics you're looking at, you're publishing on? Um, I'm, I finished part of the holographic mass equation that I've been wanting to finish for years uh, that had to do with um, scaling it so that we could account for all of the different scales in the universe. Uh, I already had found that, um, of course, the proton scale obeyed the right condition and that I was able to predict the, pre the radius of the proton and it got confirmed. It's now co-data, by the way, since last year. That's great. So, Congratulations. I mean, yeah, thank you. That is the official value for the proton radius. And um, and then, you know, we applied it to the electron and it worked out. And we applied it to the universe and it worked out. It gave us the right size, the right mass. Um, and... Now it's giving as well for the universe the right temperature, and um, which is really important. It's the background temperature of the universe. Um, there's no theoretical model that outputs that without the need for dark matter or dark energy. And ours outputs exactly in the mean value of all the measurements they've been doing for the last 10 years. So we know we're in exactly where we need to be and at that cosmological scale to have that kind of precision is insane yeah. it's like yeah. never been seen never mind for the background radiation right the cmb and so um the uh we now have applied the whole holographic mass solution to every scale so super clusters clusters stars of course you know all these things are different sizes but um, the equation outputs outputs the means, you know, of all these things very, very clean. You know, uh, in case of stars, we're comparing to like 10,000 stars and large, you know, statistical number on the, you know, on the chart. And we're like exactly in the means 
And so same thing with galaxies and so on. And so um, we know now that we have all the scales and uh, as we outputted the scales, um, fundamental constants outputted at the same time. And I'm, I'm really excited because one of them is G or the, co the gravitational constant. And the gravitational constant is one of the less well-measured value in physics. It's a big problem in physics. And every time you put G in an equation, the resolution of your solution is reduced to about four to five numbers after the period. Um, significant numbers are reduced because in quantum theory, you can have precision to like 10 to 14 digit, you know, like the G factor, which is like, you know, for instance, the, the magnetic moment, or, you know, um, you can have uh, uh, the Reinberg constant, um, alpha, these things are known to very high level of precision. So, um, it's been a big problem in physics that G is only a measured value and it can't be measured with more than five-digit precision. And so our model, as we scale down and up this um, scaling universe, I'll put like G in a very clean way from the mathematics with some um, 11 numbers of precision. And we know it's correct, although it can't be measured that far, because the same mathematics outputs, you know, uh, the Reinberg constant with like 11 digit precision. It outputs the G factor with um, uh, 14 numbers of precision and all this stuff. So we know that we have G till almost 11 uh, or at least 11 uh, numbers of precision. Uh, and so now we have a way to make quantum theory much more precise uh, and relate the cosmological scale and quantum theory so that you have this type of precision at the cosmological scale, which is on, you know, it's not, there's no match in physics to, to that. So, yeah. yeah. And, and besides the science, I mean, the real important work of this is being able to to prove this or write the equations that help people realize that we are all connected, that this is a connected universe and that changes our, really our paradigm. And after watching yeah. your first, like your first three intro videos on your courses there with, with Marshall, it was really, it kind of gave me some hope for the future that, you know, this will open up things and open up technologies and, and more of a chance for free energy and that kind of stuff, like being able to pull energy out of the ether, you know, that, that, that you're proving is, is exists like the ancients did. You know, right. like Hermes, Hermes Trismegistus, one of his principles was vibration. I mean, how, how did he know vibration was the key back then? And now you're being able to, you're starting to prove that on paper, right? That's what yeah, Tessa well, said uh, too. You know, it, all the, yeah, the, all the ancient people knew about these things, um, you know, because um, if you look at many cultures around the world, they talked about this fundamental field of that oscillated, that vibrates, like you were saying. And they called it many different things throughout the ages, you know, like um, one of the more recent way it was conveyed was called the ether. And that was in physics theory until, um, you know, Einstein, but um, um, like all electromagnetic fields equations from Maxwell, were written with an ether the the concept that it was that space was not empty and it was it was oscillating but not just oscillating in chaotic way it made vortices and these vortices uh, maxwell literally described the electromagnetic field as vortices with little balls in it <laughs> which were the particles and got the right answer for the electromagnetic uh, radiation that we observe and all this. So the fact is, is that he had an ether, he had, you know, and, um, and some of the greatest physicists um, we have today, like uh, Frank Wilczek, give talks about how one of the biggest error that happened in physics is that we removed the ether. 
He even called us children of the ether. <laughs> and this is this is a Nobel Prize winner in physics. He should be taken seriously when he says that. You know, it's, it's funny, but you know, it's it's serious. He he's saying that all the material world emerged from this fundamental field. And and as well as, you know, the possibility that consciousness is literally an emanation of that same field like it and that and thus it's all one thing. Right. Um, and it's not only the fact that it's all one thing that way, but it it's actually all one thing um, literally because it is uh, entangled uh, through wormholes. Um, and people don't realize that, you know, that um, this is not a new idea. Like uh, John Wheeler uh, and uh, actually um, Einstein and Rosen in the 40s came up with papers that describe wormhole for the first time in physics. When they did that, people think that they describe wormhole at the cosmological scale, at the big scale, but they didn't. They describe cosmological, um, you know, wormhole at the atomic level to attempt to map quantum physics to wormhole dynamics in the structure of space time. People don't realize that. They talk about wormhole all the time. You know, it's in science fiction, but it's always at the cosmological scale where, in fact, you know, all the atomic scale is actually wormholes as well. The whole thing is connected. It's all connected to one field. And when that field spins, it makes small stuff we call atoms or galaxies or superclusters or universes that we see in our cosmological scale. So is this, this is probably the furthest a competing theory has got that's been able to unify the, the small and the bigs, the micro and the macro? What is there anything yeah. else that's competing right now? Like there was string theory a while back or is like, are we kind of, I mean, it seems like in a lot of ways and on a lot of different frontiers, we're sort of tipping over some of these pillars of science. Right. I mean, the paper that I'm publishing, you know, you were asking what I'm working on. This is the paper I'm publishing. So I can't, you know, say it's the most advanced because it's not published yet, and, you know, so, but I'm just saying, like, there, there's two things. For instance, string theory that you mentioned. Well, string theory is wonderful and thousands of people have worked on it and millions of millions of dollars have been spent, um, but it has not succeeded in two decades in producing any physical evidence you know, there is no way to measure or to confirm the theory with measurement. Not one measurement has been able to confirm string theory, which is why most physicists have abandoned it. Or, you know, there's, there's still physicists working on it. However, it's a much smaller group now. But, um, you know, in the case of this theory, um, the radius of the proton that the theory predicts, which is 4% smaller than the standard model, um, is, has now become the official value that all physicists use. That's why I mentioned co-data earlier um, to uh, describe the, the size of the nuclei of an atom. Now, you might say, well, 4% is not much difference between your theory and the standard model. The problem is that, remember I was telling you about all these constants that have a lot of accuracy. They all need the radius of the proton to have, to be accurate, cannot be off by 4% because then it has re repelling effect, yeah, like repeating effects in, in the whole theory that eventually gets, the whole thing falls apart. So that's why it's been a big problem for physicists. Although it was measured in 2013, I published in 2012 the prediction. Although it was measured in 2013, it was not accepted right away because, of course, it was like throwing the pillar of the standard model out the window. So it took a while. And the measurement at the time was done with muons, which are heavy electrons. 
And so physicists were saying, well, maybe the, sh the shorter radius is due to the surface of the proton flexing when it's being hit by such a heavy particle. Um, and uh, so they repeated the measurement in different accelerators all the way until 2018, where they actually were able to measure it more accurately um, with the normal technique, which is the, um, the electron. And interestingly enough, in order for them to get the correct radius, they realized that they had to throw out the standard model um, um, uh, calculation to get the correct radius. Um, uh, so uh, this is much more solid, on uh, much more solid ground than string theory or so, any other unification theory for that matter. So did they call you up after that and were like, way to go and see you nailed it? Uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> you're still waiting. I, I might have missed that call. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I get so many calls. Yeah, another Nassim Harriman um, got it out of the blue. And... So right. where do you, where do you think unified field theory will be in 20 years? Oh, I think we're, in 20 years, we will be on our way to visiting our solar system in a similar way that we are visiting our planet today in a more casual way than burning rocket fuel, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to try to get a few miles up and then kind of hanging in there, you know, um, in orbit. Um, gravity control is going to be a very strong um, uh, focus focus yeah and and result of this uh, understanding of physics just like i was saying earlier you know g is going to be known and not just known the fact that the theory output g tells you how g works you know where einstein field equation tells you that gravity is the result of space time curving it doesn't tell you what space time is made of, right? So it's not very useful if you're trying to figure out how to curve space time artificially. But to the contrary, this theory tells you what space time is made of. It's made of little particles, you know, that, fluct that are fluctuations. The plank, plank fluctuations? I'm sorry. The Planck fluctuations. The Planck fluctuations, exactly. That the Planck scale, much smaller than the atom, like billions of times lower and smaller than the atom, and higher in frequency, thus you know, shorter wavelength than the atom, uh, is the Planck field, the energy field, the the ether, the mana, you know, um, of creation, and from there emerge all the material world. The, that's what the theory, including gravity. So all of a sudden, you get that space-time is no longer some mathematical model in Einstein field equation, but it's a real thing that's oscillating. And when it curves, it produces gravity. Now you know how to produce gravity. I, I have a note here to ask you about the size of the Planck versus the proton, because when you describe that in your video, it's quite amazing. Like the 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 Planck to the proton is like the proton to four light years away or something like that. Well, yeah, if you, so imagine like people say, well, if the space is full of these vibrations and they're so energetic, right? The, the mass is 10 to the 93 grams per centimeter cube. It's huge, right? Um, how come I don't feel them? Well, you know, um, it's because you don't feel a lot of the electromagnetic field around you, right? So like radio wave, microwave, you know, infrared, all the stuff, you know, uh, ultraviolet, background radiation from the galaxy, like all that's going through you right now. You have no clue, right? Well, if you look at the electromagnetic field, like you can go shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter wavelength. Eventually, you get below the atom, you get to the Planck scale, and we know the Planck scale is there because it's the base of how we know that the electron 
quantize, and that's how we discovered photons. And this is the base of quantum mechanics. That's when quantum me mechanics was very much classical. Well, we know those are fundamental units, like they're natural units. Like we call them natural units because like, the foot is not a natural unit. Like it's the foot of some king that decided to be a foot, right? Like the meter, right, is related to the earth, but it's not fundamental. In this case, the Planck length is like pulled right out of, the, of gravity, of the speed of light, of the electromagnetic field. And so basically, this very teeny thing, the wavelength of this thing, if you grew it to be a grain of sand, so you grew a little plump grain of space-time, so it was a grain of sand, then the proton would have a diameter from the sun to Alpha Centauri, <laughs> which is about 40 trillion kilometers. So, you know... It, that's how small this oscillation is. So, of course, you don't feel it. It's, it's present, but you don't feel it because it's not anywhere close to where you would register it uh, with your body. But as well, it's nowhere close to where we would measure it with our devices. But what, what about your memory or your consciousness? I mean, didn't I read a paper that you had? Uh, on your site that was, it seemed to me like, and I probably, it was way over my head, but it seemed to me that it was, it was kind of saying you guys have found evidence for, for memory and awareness being not just a mechanical, like a, like a uh, mechanical or chemical active part of your mind, but you're connected to something greater. Right. I can't remember uh, what the paper was called. I've got it here somewhere, but it seems it's, like... Uh, it, it's called um, uh, Space, Mem Space Memory Network. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it, it, and then it has a subtitle. But um, yeah, the Space Memory Network paper actually was cited by really good researchers in the Netherlands uh, uh, very uh, soon after it was published. And I was pretty happy to see that um, it, it the, there was a lot of interest um, with the new equations I'm going to publish, it's going to get even much better. This was a first, you know, iteration, a first approximation, but already it showed clearly that uh, in the context of this understanding of unification, that um, uh, complex system emerge from information flow through this field. So they now, so imagine you got this field of information, right? That we're calling the Planck field. It's everywhere or this field of energy, you can think of it as information, just like you think about the internet. Or the Akashic energy. records, the Akashic records. You could call it that way, yeah. The ancient civilization knew about that as well. And then you can imagine that, um, you know, this field of information, it organizes like vortices, and these vortices organize in larger ones and larger ones and larger ones. And eventually make cells, and these cells organize into more complex system. And eventually, you know, you got a hundred trillion cells or forty to a hundred trillion cells in your body, and you know, you have enough DNA to like go around the world like five million times uh, in one body. And so you can think of all this as information exchange, right, with this fundamental energy. And when you calculate this fundamental, the energy exchange, eventually you would have a complex system, biological system that could become self-aware. You could, it could become aware that it is part of this field, <laughs> you know, and that it is individualized. But it might get, it might become aware that it's individualized first. And then become aware that it's part of this field, just like a fish would all of a sudden figure out, oh, I'm part of the water. Like, you know, I'm made of water and there's water all around me, right? But it might discover that later. It would discover first that it's a fish, right? <laughs> and then discover it's part of a larger thing that is its field. And basically, you could, uh, you could, describe consciousness like the body being an antenna 
in this field of information, just like a radio set is an antenna, you know, in the field of electromagnetic fields of, you know, frequencies of the radio frequency, right? This is like, we're like radio set of the Planck frequency. When you get down to that Planck scale, is yeah. it, is it, is it similar to what we see at like the atomic scale where it's still mostly nothing? Well, you know, just like the fish is made out of water, you know, when you look at the atomic scale, it's made out of what? Planks. Yeah, but I mean, when we look closely, like at the electron, the proton, whatever, all we all we see is charge, right? We and, energy. And, yeah, that's all we see. Like uh, the the radius of the proton or the electron, whatever, are just definition of a section of space that has a high density electrostatic field that we call a particle. It's not a thing. It's not like a billiard ball down there. It, it really isn't. And, and actually, um, when you look at the difference between the proton, the nuclei of the atom, and, and the space, and then the electron, the atoms that we are made of and all the existing world around you is made of 99.9999999% space. And this space, so basically our reality is space with a little jiggle in it, okay? <laughs> and we know that this space is full of energy. So there's a good chance the jiggle is the result of the space, not the other way around, you, you see? Um, so basically what we call reality is a leak of in, or an exchange of information through the field. Oof. That's fascinating. Yeah. Well, that's, that means it's, um, it kind of goes somewhat malleable. It would seem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it kind of goes, in, drop, huh? go ahead. You might have to drop mushrooms to, <laughs> to integrate it, but when you do, it's all good. You know, it's funny you say that because you mentioned the part about the fish realizing it's in the water. Uh-huh. And well, I was that's at, what people usually report from those experiences. I was on a bunch of mushrooms there on the show. If you get yeah. the black budget, you'll get the episode where I ate the mushrooms <laughs> on the show. And okay. uh, I'm, someone came walk. we were in the basement and someone came walking down the stairs. And as they came walking down the stairs, I could feel the vibrations like, of it like thumping through the airspace and I started talking about how I was like a fish underwater, how I'm like a bottom feeder just walking around at the bottom of the the sea of air. And I wasn't, and I wasn't, and I, there's no way I could sense or feel anything. I don't even think I could, I don't even think I could hear the person coming down the stairs. No, you looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, well, the perception, you know, what those things do is they, they change the perception. It's like you tuning the antenna to a higher frequency. All of a sudden, the the data rate goes that you know goes up through the roof. Next thing you know, it's like you can have extrasensorial uh, you know experiences, you know, and uh, and awarenesses that you didn't have before. The problem is you have to be able to integrate it when you come back, you know, and that's where. You know, it can be some, like, I call it impedance, you know, in the information flow. I'm still trying to integrate my last DMT experience. <laughs> well, I do, I do like how you mentioned there are all these paranormal things, like whether it's remote viewing or remote healing. I mean, this is, this is leading us to a, an actual mechanics for that to happen. You know, it's not like exactly. people send, tend to think it's either spiritual or it's physical, it's materialistic or it's not. But I think what you're saying and proving here is that it is all connected physically. And once you get down to that level, it, it becomes almost spiritual. Right. Well, that's the way people would see it. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm known for saying that spirituality is the physics we haven't understood yet. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Clearly, you know, uh, consciousness being a relationship to the Planck field from consciousness, you know, all these equations of physics, all the comprehension we have from the world, everything we experience, it's all subjective to our consciousness being able to describe it. You can't, 
get out of that, right? It, it is a direct consequence of us expressing ourselves, right? And so you can't really separate consciousness from physics because it's our interpretation of the world that we're writing in the physics, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and so it, um, the whole thing, um, if now physics can explain how you became conscious, it's like the hand that's drawing the hand, it's like, you know, it, it, it's like um, you, you close the loop. Basically, you, you understand from the physics how your consciousness got there to write the physics. And then you uh, cease and, to exist. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, is that it literally is like that in the equation, meaning the equation is a recursive fractal equation that gives all the scales. And it's, it's, it is exactly that. It's the answer is feeding back into the equation and, and it, you know, it creates scales that way. It's funny how all those like all those like great numbers like pi and phi and they always seem to be like those weird never ending or I forget what the irrational numbers. Yeah, irrational numbers. Yeah, and they're found everywhere. Well, phi is found everywhere in nature, and that tells you something that geometry has got to be involved. You know, it has to to create the natural world. We, you know, it's clearly there. Um, for instance, all of the biggest Hollywood, you know, um, uh, rendering farms for like animation, CGI and all this, they all use fractals uh, equation when they want to make the natural world look natural. You know, like when they make a new planet with all kinds of crazy wildlife on it and, you know, but they want it to look natural, like make a plant that's not that looks natural but that's purple or you know or you know some color that you know is hard to see, that you know it can't be from earth you know or something but it has the natural look or even when they're trying to reproduce in cgi the natural look of the earth they use those fractal equations um and they use these uh fundamental you know, numbers that produce this kind of, you know, fractal structures that uh, reproduce the natural world, you know. So the fact that those numbers are there in the world, in the natural world, tells you that there is mathematical precision to the universe. Is that how you ended up? Was it you that ended up designing the art crystal or, did, or how did that uh, whole thing come about? It sounds like that's kind of leading towards designing your own thing like that. Sure. Um, you know, if you think of those equations and what they say about space time, then you start making technology that would interact a little bit with the structure of space time, <laughs> you know, although, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, space time is shaking. How can I shake with it? You know, let's, uh, you know, let's literally make a milkshake, you know, let's, let's make a little resonate. vortex in space resonate, time. Yeah. Yeah, it's resonate exactly, and um, definitely when you look at um, the way you could do that in a laboratory, you would use you know things that are producing electromagnetic fields that are um, that can resonate well, right? Well, okay, you get a bunch of things, but at the end of the day, you know you would find that the technology uses a piece that is resonating, right, uh, in all of their devices, and they happen to be crystals, right? They, they run all of our technology, uh, you know, all of our uh, oscillators or crystalline wafers that we cut very, very thinly and that we oscillate at high frequency. And so if you want to go to a high frequency, you'd use, you know, good crystals that are pure and all this. And so eventually you get to the place where you think, oh, OK, maybe using a crystal and oscillating it, like spinning an oscillating field at high enough frequency in its vicinity might structure the space in the crystal 
in such a way that it would create a little field in that field of a field of coherency, a little vortex in that field of of um, uh, of fluctuations that makes up reality. And you know, it's not a crazy thought. It's like, oh, okay. And so you start going at it, and you start trying to make a vortex. And I made a, a pretty good vortex, and I, I realized I could modify. Um, the struct, sorry, I have my kid here. Hi. <laughs> it's okay. Um, and, um, we're, in, we're in confinement. I usually be in the lab, but, um, it's okay. Um, it's my younger staff, yeah. you know, Best subjects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. They're my masters. They're my master. Um, but, um, so yeah, I, um, I eventually made a crystal that oscillates and um, that was able to like maintain oscillation from the restructuring of the space inside them so that they produce this little coherency wherever they are. And it was pretty well sustained. Like I, I did it in 99 first time, you know, and I picked that geometry of a tetrahedron because I wanted to, uh, oscillate the space most closely related to its geometry at the Planck scale. So I tried to match the geometry, right? And then uh, and cut it very precisely and then put it in this vortex field and then see if I could get some residual effect. And the crystal I was able to charge then or modify then are still active today and doing about the same that they were doing then. So I know it's resilient. And um, and it, the effect that it has generally is that it modifies the water molecule, um, meaning it, it, uh, it, it changes the water molecule. It structures it a little bit so that it's more energetic. And so when you expose water to it, the water changes and becomes a little more energetic. We can measure it in laboratory. It's very solid. And when you give it into to plants, they grow faster, bigger, stronger. They're more healthy. They're less. They're more resistant to pathogens, to invasions, and so kind of like the fruits are much bigger. They make much more fruits. Their seeds are much more viable. Um, so it has a very positive effect on plant growth and uh, thus anything that functions on water, which include human beings. <laughs> wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. Um, is there other ways that you're going to apply the, these theories into technology? Like you mentioned G and uh, anti-gravity a couple times and it just, and, and now talking about the geometric shapes, it really makes me think about uh, this, this. I saw this UFO in Israel with a group of people and it was a dodecahedron or an icosahedron shape. And it was quite wow. large in the sky and it was spinning. The halves were spinning against itself and it was floating quietly wow. through the sky. And I mean, you know, you, you talked about, well, that's going to be the next 20 years. We're going to have some, some of this technology, but I mean, some people it think it might that, not be that advanced. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, something's <laughs> flying around in anti-gravity right now. I mean, if, right. Do you, do you think it's, it's somebody's got it there or is it just, uh, um, do you have any thoughts on that? I have many thoughts on that. I don't know. I mean, first of all, it's important for the listeners to understand, you know, I'm coming from the scientific per perspective and, but I am, and I am an honest scientist. So like, I just look at the data and the data is kind of like overwhelming. Um, and so it, it's it, like, if you do just a little research, yeah. uh, even, you know, let's, let's just take the number of, inhabitable stars in our galaxy alone um, that are uh, planets uh, that uh, in our galaxy alone in you know the amount of stars that have planets is remarkable in fact we're having a hard time finding stars that don't have planets and many many of these planets are in the golden lock region where they are not too hot not too cold they could have water on it we know some of them have you know there's a lot of water in the universe. We know that now. It's everywhere, and um, and so you know, the 
I think as of 2013, there was four, like the estimate based on statistic of what they had found, right, um, was about 40 uh, billion uh, planets in our galaxy alone that could sustain life. So like just that fact should like, okay, so just so we know, you know, 20 years ago in physics conference, I would have like, let's just call them long-winded arguments with physicists about the possibility of life on there uh, in the in the universe and um i wasn't i wasn't even insinuating anything close to those numbers you know i was just saying maybe in the whole universe right there could be a planet with water on it with life right uh, i was just going for one you know um and um, so now at this point, of course, most physicists say, okay, yeah, there's most likely life out there quite a bit, and there could be a lot of advanced life. Now consider, consider that some of these planets might have a thousand years, a million years, a billion years on us, right? Um, you know, imagine what we've done in 150 years of, you know, um, scientific investigation. An application on our planet. We went from like horse and buggy to, you know, satellites and launching rockets and so on. Um, and having cell phones, like what does a, what does a, what does your cell phone or your computer looks like a thousand years from now? <laughs> right? Like how many upgrades did you get? Right. And, um, what does you you know your your mode of motivation that used to be a plane and a rocket looks like, right? A thousand years, never mind a million years, right? A million years later, right? Hopefully you're able to control gravity. Okay, this is where I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you know you've understood how gravity works and you know what it is, right? You figured out it's something like space time, but you know what space time is made of. And you know, you realize you can make wormholes, you realize you can traverse large distances, you know, at most likely faster than the speed of light, you know, at least through wormholes. And you can go pretty well anywhere you want in the galaxy or even extra galactic. So, you know, this kind of things are not like just, I mean, if you want to know what science facts are going to look like, you look at science fiction and you subtract, you know, 50, you know, to 100 years, right? Uh, and, and it's not a linear curve, so actually it's accelerating. So at this point, you can subtract like 20 to, you know, 50 years. And so... Mm, I'm just saying, like, there's a pretty good chance that extraterrestrials have visited our planet uh, because of the sheer numbers. And um, then when you look at the evidence throughout history of having had contact with extraterrestrial communities, it's not only in the archaeology, but in modern times, there's like very strong evidence, including. Two days ago, the Pentagon, you know, <laughs> releasing officially, you know, footage from, you know, uh, uh, pilots, uh, you know, chasing down UFOs. Do you think it's a possibility that consciousness could exist on the different fractals of reality? Like when you look at sort of say when you're looking at the Planck scale or the atomic scale or oh, everything. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Are you okay, Munchkin? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't. Hope everyone's okay. Be careful. How about you? Are you okay, Munchkin? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. No problem. No problem. He's good. Uh, I just like when you start to look at, say, the Milky Way, for example, on the scale of like zoomed out, look at the Milky Way, and you look at maybe that that supermassive black hole at the center is being like the nuclei of an atom or something like that. It almost seems to scale like that. And yeah. And if it's all sort of just energy anyway, then 
it seems like a possibility that the cells inside my body are maybe there's some sort of weird reality going on for them. You know, like it's, I remember watching an old like science show back in like eighties where it like zoomed into buddy's shoulder. And at first it showed like these, these germs crawling around on him, but as it kept zooming in, all of a sudden it zooms in. It's like this bustling street and there's shops open. And it's like, maybe the cells inside my body can only operate if they've got some sort of sense of meaning, you know, you got to build in a sense of meaning like us going to work. This is just some sort of subset reality for us, you know, somewhere in the shoulder blade of some mega being. Um, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I mean, you, you can like this, these concepts have been there for a long time, you know, like, uh, ancient civilization talked about the inner world, you know, as being, um, the path to the other world and, you know, like the, the connection between the big and the small, um, we could be an atom, our universe could be an atom in the shoulder of a giant, you know. <laughs> um, however, it looks a little more, I think, like, um, uh, how do you say, like fractal structures or division in the structure of space, you know, it, it meaning that um, it's not going to necessarily organize as biological life at all scales. Um, the, bi the biological life might be different scales, depending in which universe they're in. But the universes in this fractal universe thing are embedded within each other, right? So um, they're not parallel. And that's important to understand. So... That means that each point is in relationship with the whole fractal thing, whether you go up or down. So it's coordinated. It's, it's um, it, you know, it's best to think of the fractal instead of biological fractals as like, you know, spheres within spheres, like Russian, Russian dolls, you know, within each other to infinity. <laughs> From infinitely big to infinitely small, um, which includes subplanking links, you know. So out of our scales, after we prove all the rest of the stuff, we go more speculative, uh, you could call it, but we're pretty confident because we output a smaller scale than the Planck scale because you can continue to divide. And of course, if it's smaller, that means it's oscillating faster than the speed of light because the Planck scale is oscillating at the speed of light. So now this thing is oscillating at four, uh, 10 to the 40th, the speed of light. So I don't know if people understand exponent, but um, there's about 10 to the 40th centimeter difference between the radius of the proton and the size of the universe. So um, so, you know, something that's going 10 to the 40th fa faster than the speed of light to you would appear as, um, as instantaneous, right? <laughs> and, um, and so this is the flow of the information that we need to access in order to translate the universe, in order to, like, go from one side of the universe to the other. Like, we could go from one side of the universe to the other at 10 to the minus 17 seconds. Like that would be how long it takes, which is like a very, 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 very teeny amount of time. You don't have time for the peanuts or the jet lag, or, you know, you don't get the nice meals or anything like that. You just leave and you arrive pretty well, you know, for you it's instantaneous. So that's a possibility. That'd be nice. Just translate that into technology. You know, we'll have our anti-gravity craft. I so mean, is so that why you start getting into holographic when you see those things oscillating at the speed of light? Because that's almost like, I mean, was it Richard Lighthouse we were talking to about how it seemed like the universe is sort of blinking in and out of existence all the time? Right. Well, it's oscillating. So we would see it as blinking out in and out of existence. But it's it's not. It's just exchanging information. So when it exchange information, right? It's like it's like uh, 
It's like a, a semiconductor, right? I, I'm trying not to get too technical, but think of a crystal oscillating is, is a semiconductor oscillating and it, it's piezoelectric. It produces, uh, uh, you know, electromagnetic oscillation because an electron falls into a hole, right? <laughs> Basically. And, um, it, and this principle give the right answer for the amount of energy and so on. And, um, and um, basically, what is? I'm sorry, I, my son is is doing all kinds of things. It's okay. Hey, my son, <laughs> Mushi. <laughs> Don't. It's okay. Looks like a nice sunny day. Yeah. It almost matches the window in the window. It could just be a continuation, except he has. Our, we, our trees don't have leaves yet. We're still a <laughs> okay. month away from having All leaves right. on trees. My, the universe got, was interrupted. That's okay. Um, Chaos theory. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, my universe was interrupted with another one. Um, they overlap and, sometimes. And they do. And, the yeah. vortices, uh, they collide, and then smaller ones come out. We you don't. Know. We don't want to keep you too long, so maybe we could start uh, wrapping it up here. With uh, maybe we can cycle back quickly to uh, to you, to the course. I mean, I, I was going to ask you kind of a uh, a crazy question, but that, okay, let me ask you that first, but and then we'll and then we'll cycle back to the course. I don't want to let that one go. But uh, we talked about the Andy Grav and the and the UFOs, and you mentioned the Pentagon thing. I'm surprised there's, you know, there is groups all over the world working on this type of technology. I mean, have you been approached by people? Have you had offers at all? Or have you been involved Rents. at all in any kind of, uh, you know, maybe advancement of uh, some technology? And you don't have to answer, but. I, yes, I've been, in, I've been, I was approached by many different groups throughout the years, um, you know, Um some that were private groups and some that were, you know, part of uh, larger, larger organizations. organizations. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. We're just going to call that that yeah. way. Yeah. And um, there's um, a large effort that's being made, even public efforts at NASA that are being made. Like, I mean, NASA is publicly attempting to produce a um, vacuum drive. Yeah. Um, you know, that is warping space time. I mean, this, this is part of what's actually happening in the world. Is that that M and drive? Is that the M drive? That one? No, the M, the no, M that's a drive one. That's... is the M drive is something completely oh, different. Wow. It's, um, it, the M drive is, uh, is actually one of the first evidence that propulsion uh, can be generated in the structure of space-time, you know, by electromagnetic field. This is a this is a little conic object that's just blocked on the, both sides, in which you just input, um, you know, microwaves. Um, very simple device, and it produces thrust without anything coming out of the device. There's no. It it appears to violate the laws of motion. That's why, although it was invented almost 20 years ago, uh, you know, it has not been recognized until recently when NASA finally, after the Chinese tested it, NASA finally tested it and said, oh, yeah, it does produce thrust, you know, with fairly low, low level of energy. Wow. And, um, yeah, so that's one thing. So the only conclusion they could come Two was that it was pushing against the structure of the vacuum. It was pushing against the Planck field that that they actually published. And um, you know, but the but the same uh, organization within NASA um, that is research that that measured the M drive is the same part of NASA that's trying to make a work drive. Um, and they've been trying to make a work drive by harvesting some of the energy that's in the structure of space to create a wormhole or like a, a singularity, a, a point of high density that, you know, can be displaced in front of the ship to make the ship gravitationally attracted to some, it's like the carrot in front of the donkey, you know, 
it, it keeps trying to get it, but it can't fall in the black hole because it's just in front of it. Yeah. I wonder if the first people, like, they'll try and flick it on and they'll just be like, bloop, accidentally just on the other side of the universe. <laughs> and they're like, shit, how do we get back? Uh, kind of like the Philadelphia yeah. experiment. Or like Star Trek you know? Voyager yeah. where they just got lost and they're like yeah. trying to get home, you know? Cause you oh, just. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, exactly. Like, what about, you know, what or happened? Dodging Bob? stuff. Well, who's volunteering for the next try? Yeah. 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 Because I guess, or. <laughs> When when you're flying through space at this insane speed, you're not actually traveling through space. You're just existing with a blinking and blinking sort of thing. So you don't need to dodge stuff. Right. I always feel like when in Star Trek, like there's not, they don't just hit the odd rock. It's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you must feel somewhat vindicated after, after going against the grain of academia for so long and doing your own thing, your own research. And now you're teaming up with other like physicists and stuff like that. But that, that yeah. you're actually recognized by some of these greater organizations for your work informally, you know? Right. Well, you know, I, I it's coming along, you know, it takes a long time. It's, it's hard to go against the grain. People that have been working on these things for like, you know, decades and they are, you know, being educated in a certain way. It's very difficult to change the paradigm, but, um, it it's and it's really moving nicely now i think there's more and more people realizing uh it, it was not so obvious 20 years ago or 30 years ago when i was going to physics conferences it wasn't so obvious that there was um a problem in physics meaning physicists were happy with two vastly different theories that described the small and the big and they didn't see any reason they thought oh this string theory is coming and it's going to resolve this and you know we don't really need and it, it was very and they were very confident i was told multiple times oh no no we're gonna have this all beautiful and clean within the next few years yeah that leftover stuff is just dark energy and dark matter don't worry exactly. about that don't worry about that that we'll figure that out later yeah, yeah, we'll detect it eventually. Um, we we just gotta get a few billion dollars, you know, and we'll we'll have it, and uh, it's all gonna come together. And so, you know, there was a lot of it was hard to there was a lot of arrogance, in fact, you know, and so it was hard. And um, it, but now, um, and you know, I I hadn't done all the work necessary to be able to bring the proof. Now I have, and you know, that's a different world, you know, so these kind of things happen. Uh, they start to support a theory. Well, you know, typically those eventually became, become, you know, the prevalent theory that's utilized. Yeah. Well, you know? and plus you're bringing it to the public. I mean, you've got it. I love how you've got it out there in your, in your uh, resonance foundation, your resonance sign foundation uh, website. That whole documentary, The Connected Universe, was made about you, which was fantastic for people. They can go to Vimeo and watch that. And, yeah, with uh, Picard and, yeah, narrating. Yeah, it. yeah. Picard? <laughs> yeah, Sir Patrick and the narration. So yeah. can you maybe just talk, uh, and we'll let you go here. We don't want to keep you too long, but about the courses, just to tell people about the courses quickly again and how they can start learning all this stuff. I mean, how to think differently and about... Uh, the physics and, and all that. And where we can get our art crystals. Yeah, yeah, and the art crystal too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, the the course can be uh, gotten at um, Resonance Science, uh, the Resonance Science Foundation. So it's uh, resonancescience.org. And um, you can, it's free. You can register right there and take the course. And we have a forum. People can talk about all these ideas on and, um, every for since we just opened free, um, I started to do like a two hour question and answer uh, session every week, you know, on Wednesdays where I, you know, for each of the modules of the course. And I talk about that specific module on each of those weeks. And so, you know, people per can participate that on that, too. That's free as well. And, um, yeah, we, you know, we're building, uh, you know, a strong community. We have 
you know, some 70,000 people involved, millions of people are following us on Facebook and so on. And so it is um, getting, you know, very a great conversation that's going on and people participating is a great way. People can get their art crystal at artcrystal.com. Um, you know, um, art crystals with an S.com. And um, as well, um, you know, we have a research lab that's called Taurus Tech. And, um, and we're doing a lot of theoretical research um, that we're in the middle of um, getting um, put in place to be published soon. And um, people should keep their eye on that because when it comes out, um, it's going to have really important information for the public. It's going to be a technical paper. It's going to be for the more technical public at first, but we're going to write layman articles to explain what we're saying in the paper. We are planning even equation per equation to explain what the equation says so that people understand what we're talking about. Fantastic. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for, for doing that. I think it's really important work, just proving that we are all connected. I mean, it really is changing people's paradigms. So totally. I'll put all those links in the show notes for everything. And, uh, and we really want to thank you for your time spent here. And it's nice thank to meet you. you. I'm sorry for the interruption. No, 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 it's all good. <laughs> no all good. Hopefully those um, little ones will be reading some textbooks with some unified field theory in it one day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They will. I mean, it's really uh, amazing to see as well people taking the course that are um, the young population, you know, including 10 year olds and so on. And they get it. Um, you know, it's really, really good. And they, they ask really good questions and it's, and they, the dialogue is remarkable. People are really opening up to these ideas and it's really important that we have the good, good science to come with it so that you know that it's based on something solid and yeah. that that's really critical. Awesome. Right on. Thanks a lot, Nassim. Right on. Thank Thanks you. for coming Thanks. on the show, Nassim. Have a good night. Enjoy your uh, quarantine. And uh, Thank you. You guys too. Come hey, back anytime. Hello to Canada over there in the great north. Uh, I <laughs> miss you all. It's not white now. It's sort of starting <laughs> to, to color up a little bit. Slowly. Oh, good. You guys are on freezing. Yeah. I wonder if the... I wonder if the art crystal is good for COVID. Oh, Can't maybe, hurt. maybe, yeah. Can't hurt. Well, you know, it helps people with um, vitality and energy uh, levels. It definitely helps plants that we've proved that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I, 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 since we're mostly made out of water, uh, I don't see why it wouldn't help humans. <laughs> yeah, just don't say that word or we'll get censored, Darren. Be careful. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, see you later. Right on. Thanks, Nassim. Have a good bye -bye. night. Bye-bye. Good night. Now is a chat with the one and only uh, Nassim Harriman. What'd you think, buddy? It was yeah, it was good. I, I don't know. I find like when I'm when I'm when I'm in the show, I, I get I, I have more epiphanies and I understand it more than when I'm studying for the show. I really do. Maybe it's because I'm really focused and listening or something like that. Epiphanies? Yeah. Or just like you, just clarity. Like I more, just feel uh -huh. clarity. Like clarity? the whole at first, when I first learned about like when I was with Michael, like six years ago or five years ago at his lecture and learning about the the mass of the proton and the the spin, you know, radius, all the all the stuff, the holographic part, it just sometimes it just sounds like words. But now I, I picture it more, I visualize it more as like the way shape it space is shaped. You know, You're really the, coming along, the geometric aspect of it. You're really coming and along. Maybe that UFO I saw was something to do with, uh, you know. I wasn't expecting you to bring up the UFO, ah, I but thought, what the hell? Yeah. Might as well, it's, you only get to talk to Nassim Harriman he once. You might as well bring up your Israel UFO site. You know, he made a tetrahedron crystal, right? I mean, and I saw an icosahedron UFO, so I felt like there's a connection there. I felt like we. I feel like we should order some art crystals this year, 2020. That's our goal. Let's manifest it. Art crystals. Yeah, okay. let's manifest it. We should. America.ca slash support. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that was a fun one. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, honestly, the, it's a great it's a great video. The courses are great. Marshall, I mean, I was going to talk to Nassim about it, but we've had, you know, Adam Apollo is helping him out. Marshall Efforts is uh, is the host of those videos with the courses. We had him on about his book, Cosmometry. That was a fantastic chat. And we've had... Uh, um, was it Cosmometry? That's what, it, I think that's what it was called, yeah. Yeah, and we've also had... Um, Jamie Jan over on a couple times. Twice. He's, uh, Three times. He's helping the seam out too. I mean, he's surrounded by a bunch of great folks as well. Totally. Yeah. It'd be fun to do. And talk. I love the mix of like spiritual. He 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 goes back to these ancient things and the ancient sites, and they're very open to you know the higher consciousness aspect of all this as well. It'd be good to go on a little contact with him one day. Go to Egypt with him. Yeah. Hang out in the Great Pyramid. Yeah. Heard some stories. Sounds like a fantastic cat to hang out with. It was a fantastic interview from his lockdown. Finally got to see him on the show. Fantastic. Big thanks to, shout out to Brian for helping us put that one together. Thanks, B-Lord. We love you, Brian Lord. Oh, I doxed him. <laughs> is that doxing or is it only if I give his like address and stuff? Yeah, you can say names. You can say names. name dropping. Okay. That's just name dropping. <laughs> Brian Lord. <laughs> uh, Grimerica.ca slash support. Uh, join our art crystal, contribute to our art crystal slush fund and help us keep the wheels turning here in our little self-made media thing in the basement. We've got all this equipment, we've got the new gear, got the sound sounding good. We got the internet bills to pay for. We got rent to pay for. We got hosting to pay for all these bills to pay for. Couldn't do it without you guys. We'd have had to close up shop if it weren't for our supporters. There'd be no show. That interview wouldn't have happened. No supporters. Luckily, we do have supporters, and they made sure that the interview did happen. If you want to be one of those people to make sure the next interview happens, maybe with your hero, go America.ca slash support. Remember when you got to interview Theo Fleury? Yeah. Yeah. That was good, yeah. 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 Anyway. Why did, why did that come up? He was like, your hero. Well, he wasn't like a like contemporary little. hero. Yeah. At What's one contemporary? Point, yeah. What? When you were like little, modern, he was your hero. Modern, like it's funny. Nowadays. And then you ended up spinning into an addiction problem. <laughs> exactly. When you were looking up to Theron Fleury, who at the time you probably yeah. didn't realize yeah. was spinning out with an addiction yeah. problem. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah, it was great. That's almost like you were probably thinking, I want to be like Fleury. <laughs> and, I, and I got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Minus the, you know, millions, Minus the of, millions dollars of dollars. Spent on yeah. blow. You're yeah. probably better off. If you had had millions, you might not be here. You might have just had a, oh, I wouldn't have made it. have a really nice no, I wouldn't tombstone. Have made it. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have made it. <laughs> America.ca slash support, guys. We love you. Help support to the show. If you're getting a little value from the podcast, send a little value back our way. Of course, if you check out the show notes, there's a ton of different ways you can support the show in there that don't cost you a dime. You can review the show, share the show, sign up for the newsletter, sign your friends up for the newsletter, get some swag over at the Red Bubble Shop, all sorts of stuff you could do. Send cash in books, send C's, send whatever. Uh, send feedback, send synchronicities, synchronicities, sightings. It seems like we haven't got much spam lately. Let's make it a spam. Well, week. cause we got the Let's chats see now, right? Everybody's in the chat. Spam so. We can generate for Graham. No, it's in a week. okay. You can just, just, just join the chats. G R A H A M. Acromerica.com. Spam that motherfucker. Let's blow up his inbox. We love you. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week. Stuff dreams are made and popsicle sticks. Please look at my rocket ship schematics. Tell me it can fly to the moon. Tell me I'm not a lunatic. In my hands I have a gas can and mash this Yes sir, this is my home but I need a vacation From all the sadness, the chaos and traumatics I 
let you do the countdown. Three, two, one, no hesitation. It's a happier place to be. I won't cry, miracle. Maple syrup is the best. It's so yeah. good. Oh. I won't cry. Just be present with me and love me. I won't cry, miracle. Wow. 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 When they start doing this weird hello, <laughs> Hey Grimericans, that's the way you do it. Listen to Grimerica on the World Wide Web. Hey Grimericans, that's the way you do it. Donate to Grimerica on the World Wide Web. Hey Grimericans, that's the way you do it. Money for something good, vibes for free. Because without support, it all comes to a grinding home. So keep lubing the system with your support dollars. Go America.ca slash support. Touch it and feel it. Let, let meditate with it on mushrooms. Like do a whole spiritual thing with it. See what happens. You could uh, smudge it. Oh, it smells. You couldn't. It smells. It's a f- No, your energy body's always with you. It's, it's, it's around me. It's my aura that's around me now. It's interloping and... Overlapping with your aura. Keep your fucking energy beings <laughs> off of it. All right? You're making it weird. Okay, whatever. Just be present with me and love me. Just keep your energy body off my energy body and we'll be fine.
There's no overlapping. Interloping. Interloping. I might have used the wrong word there. Uh, long day in the studio. Yep, long day. Be nice to Graham. He's sensitive. <laughs> that's, that's the one that got read to me when somebody <laughs> fell in the pool. <laughs> I'm more sensitive than I let on. <laughs> Most people are. Graham lets on a lot, so that's why we know he's, there's a lot under this, a lot of iceberg underneath. A lot of steam, a lot of steam puff <laughs> underneath. A lot of steam puff and ice stuff. Yeah. Cool. Okay, okay, that's, that's fine. That's our only rule in grammar. There's more rules than that, and I make them up as I go, so get used to it. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's disgusting. It's a half of a skull. And it smells. It's all dirty. I don't think you need all this technology. If it's consciousness, then maybe, you know, I can go to wherever I need to go in a fucking trash can if I can get my head straight. They changed their whole their whole meow and they started doing this weird hello. <laughs> Take it easy. It's not quite like that. They say hello. Hello. They do. <laughs> There's a jingle. There's a jingle waiting to happen. Uh, unique snowflake. It's all triangles. One day we'll be selling muffin cookbooks for 150 bucks a piece on some separate entity so that we can get paid for Grimerica, and that'll be like the thing. Head to suziesmuffins.com and buy a book if you want to support the show. <laughs>